you get four icons, each respected in their field of work, where that's in the boxing world, where that's in the NFL world, the football world, where in the world of music, or is part of civil rights activists and part of the civil rights movement. You get each one known for their legendary status on life. And then you get them all into one room, and you're wondering, what happened when the camera wasn't rolling? Yes, I'm going to review the movie from the year 2021, One Night in Miami, directed by Regina King. And you know what? This is a solid, serious movie that really got you thinking at the end of it. And I'm excited to review it on this episode of Movie Breakdown. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. And what's Movie Breakdowns? Movie review series where we look at new and old movies, give them a grade A to up. Plus, minus if you count. And if there's a movie you want me to review, let me know. Please put in the comment section below and I get to it as best I can. Also, I have a Patreon, Patreon slash Ali Zaka. And on that Patreon, because you're paying for my services, you're paying for me to do the work, I'm going to go ahead and get the movie review that you want me to do immediately and get it done as soon as possible and put it up there sooner than all the other reviews. Instead of getting it a few months later on Facebook and YouTube, you're getting it right now on Patreon. And the reason why, you're paying for my services. Anything you ask, I'll do it. Also, I have a um, another tier in Patreon where you get trail reaction, trail reviews, and much more detailed content. But that's Patreon. Now let's go ahead and get today's review of One Night in Miami for 2021. This first part of the review is going to have spoilers free. The second part is going to be all spoilers. So, what is this about? Like I said, it's about four icons, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Sam Cooke, and Jim Brown all go into a room. They spend pretty much the night of celebration together, and what you get is the conversation between these four legends, these four icons, all in pretty much in a, I guess, a very pivoting point of their careers or their lives. This is a moment where they all kind of came together and pretty much had this conversation that the writer who is Kim Powers, I think it's Kim Powers, let me see his name real quick, screenwriter, yep, Kim Powers, who's a screenplay writer, is based off his stage play and it's pretty much his idea of what he thinks the conversation happened between the walls of those four icons. And this movie makes you think a lot. It's a pretty, I'd say, important movie to watch because the conversation they have is like conversation that we're having today in a sense. I felt like I was like watching a movie that was based in 1960s that happened today. Like these same conversations literally could be had in the room with people today and I, I applaud this movie. This movie is done really, really well. Matter of fact, putting the the tablet down to give a clap because it is done really really well it is so good the acting is good the the storyline the the points of it, and everything about it the beats the pacing is solid and you feel like you're watching this movie you're like man it, I wonder what it'd be like to actually be a fly on the wall in this actual situation and to see like if that conversation really happened if it really went down that way because it's based on a true story but it doesn't it definitely have a fictional aspect of it on what happened within the room because they all did meet up that night but what happened within those walls we don't know it's just what Kim Power as a screenwriter what he thought could have went down in that conversation within those four um, in the conversation within those four icons and I think it's great I think it's great like I said the the storyline and the writing and the pacing and the notes and things like for example there's not really music playing in this movie. You don't really hear music played in the movie unless they're referencing a song or unless they're talking about something. Then you start hearing music play. But other than, other than that, most of the time, it's literally just like four people in a room talking. Kind of like the movie 12 Angry Men. 12 people in the room talking. No music. You don't really notice it until at the beginning of the movie or the end of the movie. But other than that, once they get into that hotel room or they start the motel room, 
no music. And I think it's done well. It makes everything sit in. You actually have to listen and mix the weight of what they're saying holds true. Matter of fact, um, my girlfriend and I, when we just watched this movie, we stopped and had a legit conversation about like the situations and how this movie um, brings a certain talking point. You're like, man, I can't believe that like this conversation I was pretty sure I had with my mother and friends, you know, four months ago or five weeks ago, where the case may be. Like, I feel like these conversations are still happening to this day, which is something crazy to think about. But at the same time, it's also like, that, those events happened between, what, 50, 60 years ago? Like, yeah. It's, it's pretty, still pretty raw in America's um, history books. It is still pretty new, pretty fresh in American history books on the events of the 60s. And this movie brings them up and it makes you talk, it makes you think. And I think it's definitely a movie that everybody should watch. Everybody should watch and pretty much soak in and just have these talking points that this movie brings to life. Now, let's talk about characters. Because there's really four people here that you really need to pay attention to when it comes to this movie. Kingsley Ben Adir, who plays Malcolm X. I thought he did a good job. I thought his cadence, his pacing, everything he said, I felt like it resembled Malcolm X from what I've seen. Now, I could be completely off. I've never really died in Malcolm X background like that, so I could be completely off and definitely look at more Malcolm X footage. But from what I've seen growing up and from what I've seen um, and hearing from him, that like, yeah, I was, he was a believable Malcolm X to me. Eli Gurry, who played Cassius Clay, who is Muhammad Ali, I felt like he was a little off of Muhammad Ali. I felt like his cadence for Muhammad Ali didn't bring it to me. He looked like him. Perfectly fine, and the way he acted and, and the things he said was 100% that of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, speaking of which, in this movie, is the comic relief character. He's the one bringing the quick wicks, the jabs, the jokes, and he's the one who's kind of like bowstring, and it's kind of like a kid. He is 22, mind you, in this room of all these icons, so he is the youngest at this point. But I felt like just the, the talking points of Muhammad Ali, he didn't sound like him, but other than that, it's cool. And maybe because I actually watch a lot of Muhammad Ali footage. I've heard a lot of his his uh, interviews and conversations and talks and follow Muhammad Ali probably because my name is Ali. It's just the fact that Muhammad Ali to me, I guess I'm attached to his name whether I wanted to or not. And since my granddad was a boxer growing up, I got to watch a lot of Muhammad Ali's footage so I know what he sounds like. I can hear what the greatest sound like if I heard a video. So I might put a clip on. I can be in another room and not know what they're watching but I know like, hey, there's Muhammad Ali there. I feel like Eli Gorey looked like him, but just couldn't get the cadence right, but the mentality of Muhammad Ali he had. Aldis Hodge, he played Jim Brown. I thought he did a good job. He was more the voice of reason and kind of the guy who took a step back and kind of let everything soaked in. And he was the one to kind of like add an ear and, and lend some words to a few of the characters. And speaking of which, which I'm talking about in my spoiler review, um, who the antagonists are in this movie, the antagonist protagonist. And then Leslie Odom Jr., who plays Sam Cooke. Leslie Odom Jr. is a legit singer. Like, he is a musician. Pretty dang good one. And I didn't recognize him in this movie until I looked at him. I was like, oh my gosh, Leslie Odom Jr. And his acting was dang good. Like, I thought it was spot on. I, I applaud him. I applaud him. Because, yeah, man, it was believable. Him and... Him and King Ben Idea, they're back and forth solid. Solid. And then I just want to give a shout out to Lance, Lance Riddick, who plays Kareem X. Lance Riddick is in the John Wick movies. And just seeing him in this movie, I'm like, that's a guy from John Wick. It's just kind of neat like to see him in here. I don't really want to talk about anybody else because it's really like the main people you really want to talk about. And Design, aesthetics, looks, everything was solid. The lighting, the tone. When you put it feel like a dark sip feeling, the movie made you feel like a dark feeling. When it put it bright, it put it bright. It take you different places within the motel so you can get a little more like breathing room so you're not claustrophobic. But then it comes back to the motel room where you have this very serious conversation that, you know, definitely sets the tone. And on top of that, because of like the fact they're in the motel room, I don't really think much lighting was done. Like it's literally just motel room light. It wasn't dark shades of tones or anything like that. It was just like them in the motel. Solid. Okay, so is this a Friday night movie? 
Yes, this is a Friday movie. Watch your friends and family, have the conversation that pops up, listen to talking points, and just discuss with everybody. It's a great movie to do that with. Now, I'm going to grade this movie, One Night in Miami. I'm grading this movie an A-. minus. Yes, an A-. minus. Why am I grading One Night in Miami an A-, minus when I also give it such a high grade? Really, it's Muhammad Ali. Cassius Clay it just throws me off. He's, he throws me off. Like it's, It throws me off a little bit to the point where I'm like, okay, I feel like his cadence doesn't hit Cassius Clay. But other than that, everything else is solid. But yeah, it's, it's an A-. minus. This movie is a solid movie. Definitely worth the watch. Um, Running time of this movie is... Let me see what the exact run time is. 1 hour and 54 minutes. I feel like the 1 hour and 54 minutes... It's definitely long enough. It's solid. It doesn't need to be longer than that. And it definitely gets you intrigued into more of the characters. But yeah, it's A minus. It's an A minus movie. That's it. If you guys seen One Night in Miami, what did you think? Please let me know. Please put it in the comment section below. Other than that, see you guys in the next episode of Movie Breakdowns. And keep being awesome. Because spoilers are coming up here in 3, 2, 1. Let's get it. All right. So, what is the conversation that happened between Sam Cooke and Michael Max? They're talking about the civil rights movie. They're talking about, you know, what their impact is towards their community and towards making, you know, get, shutting down oppression and making sure that we're equal for everybody. Michael Max, everybody knows, was wanted to be more militant. He wanted people to separate and go their own community, have black people in their own communities, have black people build themselves up. While Sam Cooke was like, no, we don't need to try to separate. This is our country. This is our country, too. We know we need to learn to grow and you know what? Money doesn't care about your black or white or Hispanic or whatever color you may be. Money cares about one thing, green. And green grows. He was like, we need to find a way to get onto the charts. He, he talked about how he had one guy who, you know, cracked the top 194, but then gave it to the Rolling Stones and they cracked uh, the top 10 in the um, pop charts the residual check came back and that guy was rolling in money. He was like, money doesn't care about what race you are. Money is only green and people won't let us in money. He was like, we can do the work in the background, but that's how we're going to build ourselves up to get into, you know, a spotlight. And it's really about oppression and civil rights movements. That's what this is about and just want to be considered equal. No segregation, equal. And Malcolm X and Sam Cooke pretty much had their own versions of it. Michael Max was like, we definitely should be, you know, have our own communities and grow our own communities and get stronger in our communities, which kind of goes against, you know, the, the, the thought process of, like, trying to be equal amongst everybody. And Sam Cooke was like, no, man, we don't care about that. Muhammad Ali is making an impact. At this point, he just beat um, Sonny Liston, and by the change of names of Muhammad Ali, he is converting to Islam, which this is the nation of Islam in this movie, but... Michael makes it actually getting out of the nation of Islam to follow the actual true teaching of Islam. So it's kind of neat seeing a little religious aspect in this movie and seeing like Muhammad Ali thinking about becoming Islamic or not and trying to figure out like, well, you know, what can I do with my life? I'm Islamic and all these things. And him like judging between that. That's what Kim Powers had Muhammad Ali go through that little thought process like, huh, you know, do I really want to do this? And Muhammad Ali follows through. He becomes Muhammad Ali after this um, movie. Jim Brown talks to them about, you know, becoming a movie star and jumping into movies and no longer doing football because, like, he's like, there's more to life than just running the ball down the field and being, when he's like a, kind of like a gladiator in a in an arena where the Kings get to watch kind of mentality, which that was interesting because Jim Brown was considered one of the best football players of all time and he loved to do movies and do acting and he was like, I'm not just a guy running the ball for people. On the screen, I'm the guy, I'm like the first black guy in the movie where, yeah, I might get killed off, but I'm the first black guy in the movie. That's something different. I'm a movie star now. And it was kind of neat to see how their influences affect everybody. Muhammad Ali went to boxing, then he got into civil rights and did other things that like everybody else was like, oh, wow, okay. And they all have the impact on their communities, whether you know it or not. These four did. Sam Cooke made a song, It's a Long Time Coming, Change Gonna Come. That song, I think the name of the song is Change. And he at this point, Michael X is talking to him in the movie, like, you're only making songs about love and romance. How about make a song that's really impactful to the community? And Sam Cooke's like, I am doing this. You don't know why I'm doing the background. 
And it's kind of a conversation that me and my girlfriend had about like, yeah, you can you know, see what somebody's doing in the in the background, doesn't mean they're not being make it being a difference maker. And I was like on a lot of like, you know what, like, you know, it'd be cool to see somebody in the front lines like fighting for civil rights, fighting for, you know, others people and you know, oppressed people. Cause like this movie literally you could change the four people out and it would be I've had this conversation with my family and friends about, you know, the civil rights movement about not even just that black lives matter about 2020 what's going on here everybody's seen what happened you know not trying to get really political on here but everybody's or political thing the word to get i guess super realistic on a very you know review that's probably like kind of a review a review series that's more fun and like just happy go lucky but yes life is it's things are part of life and it's really tough uh conversation like george floyd that's tough to watch and when you're trying to show people that hey this happens all the time and we just want to bring light to it and it takes somebody else to die to try that to happen and then people are like okay black lives matter and this and that's what they're protesting and this is why we're you know we just want equal equality amongst the board like that that's a tough conversation to have and we had that conversation this movie invites that conversation it makes you want to sit there and talk about like man this movie right here is crazy and as a black male watching this movie, I was like, this movie could happen in 2021 and change the characters out and be the same exact thing. Like, it's crazy that this conversation, what Kim Powers was thinking, happened in 1960. And I'm pretty sure a lot of conversations have been happening in 1960. I'm pretty sure that conversation happens every day in America, every single day. And this movie really, like, just kind of shed more light on that. And I applaud that because it opens the conversation. It has people get talking points, and you're like, wow, okay. They didn't really think of it that way. And it really comes down to Sam Cooke and Malcolm X and their differences. That's what this movie is really about. They're antagonists. They're antagonizing each other in a sense. Where Malcolm X, like he's attacking Sam Cooke and Sam Cooke's going back at Malcolm X. And Jim Brown and Muhammad Ali are kind of just in the background trying to like either separate them or be like more of a um, voice of reason. Just give like a little levity to the situation. And it's a very tough conversation. So I'm glad Muhammad Ali is the comic relief. He is the guy who's like trying to flip everything around and say, yo, it's about me. I'm the greatest. It's my night. It's my night. And Jim Brown's kind of like just the soft-spoken voice of, of a reason in the background. I think this movie is a solid movie. Definitely worth the watch. Definitely worth the listen to. And take your time. Go watch One Night in Miami and enjoy it. So, yeah, this movie gets an A- minus for me. If you've seen One Night in Miami, what did you think? Please put it in the comment section below. Other than that, see you guys next episode when we break down. Keep being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, you want to see what else I'm doing, my normal life and other things that's going on, please follow me on Instagram at Ali underscore Zaka. I'll put it right here, right here around my face. Yep, right there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Also, if you want more episodes of Movie Breakdowns or Grind Tour Success or whatever it is I'm doing on YouTube, you know what? Follow my page right here, like I said before, the little comment thing right there, right there, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you can watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns right here and watch the last episode of Grind Tour Success right there. Other than that, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate y'all. See y'all next time. Keep being awesome.